Okay, so the next question here I got from Soul Drift, and he asks me a lot of questions. Um, sorry guys, I gotta cut through it. So um, he says, I guess my next question would be, are there any good rock bands in Taiwan? I've heard some songs from Taiwanese bands, but I'm not familiar with Taiwanese rock. Or I'm not as familiar with Taiwanese rock as I am with J-Rock and K-Rock. He means Japanese rock and Korean rock. But yeah, any good Taiwanese bands, especially heavy metal, hard rock, alternative, and punk rock. That's the music I'm into, not the soft rock stuff. Okay, so yeah, to, to just answer that, uh, Soul Drift. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let me show you this. A long time ago, and I made a series of videos on this, I went to a music festival in the south of Taiwan in Kanding called Spring Scream. You can see those videos on my, on my channel. I uploaded them. And when I was there, I saw this group. They're called the Ever So Friendlies, and I got their CD, Splonderic. Uh, they're a foreign band. The guys on the, uh, or sorry, the guys in the band are foreign. And um, yeah, they're kind of an alternative band, but they're pretty cool. They have some, um, what, what can I say? They have influences from a number of, uh, of different kind of music styles, but it's it gets a little dark and heavy in there, and... I like them, so uh, that's one group, but they're not really Taiwanese, they're just uh, foreigners in Taiwan. But what I really want to mention to you, Soul Drift, and this also ties into the whole election thing here, is that um, this guy, okay, that guy on the left side of the picture, if I'm correct, Freddie Lim, is the lead in a heavy metal band here called Chthonic. And uh, here's their Chinese name. Yeah, they're called Chthonic. And uh, this guy, Freddie Lim, the guy on the left in the picture that I showed you, he started a brand new political party this year or sorry, last year, not this year, last year. See, I'm going to be doing that. He started a brand new political party called the NPP, the New Power Party. And this was born out of the um, Sunflower Student Movement that took over the legislative UN, I think, two years back now. But yeah, it grew out of that. And it's a progressive leading, uh, a left-wing party, and it's just suddenly come out and they are they are contesting elections and it's crazy because this guy Freddie Lim he used to work for Amnesty International and he is the lead singer in a heavy metal band called Chthonic and now he's like the creator the founder of this brand new political party the NPP new power party that is going to contest elections and I think I think they might win. They might win some elections here. They are not running for president. The people running for president here in Taiwan are for the Kuomintang, the KMT, the Blue Party. Uh, that would be Eric Chu. And uh, you can see that here. Uh, I got a copy of the newspaper today to show you guys. There. Here we go. That's the Taipei Times. You can see there. There's a KMT rally. They're talking about Mind Joe, Eric Chu, and there's the photo. And a little bit farther down, they mentioned Chai. So yeah, Eric Chu is running for the the Blue Party, the KMT, and uh, Chai Ing Wan is running for the Blue. Or sorry, excuse me. She's running for the Green Party, the DPP. And then a guy named James Soong, I think I'm, I'm probably butchering that, but he's running for the PFP, the People First Party, and they are running for uh, the presidency here in Taiwan. And the, um, I should also mention the TSU, the Taiwan Solidarity Union, 
are endorsing uh, Chai ing -wan, the Green Party, the DPP candidate for president. So that's what it looks like right now. And um, yeah, so this ties into all your music question, uh, Soldier. Sorry, I hope I haven't gone off on too far of a tangent here. But uh, yeah, so let me continue. So he says about the music, and then he says, next question would be like Leviathan does. Taiwan really care what goes on over here politically like they do in Europe. As a right-wing conservative fanatic, I'll admit I'm not a big on Trump, but better than Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton. No more Bushes and Clintons. And no to Sanders. Okay, so, uh, yeah, like I mentioned before, uh, Soul Drift, uh, yes, they do care what happens here in Taiwan, right? Um, yes, they do care what happens here in Taiwan. They care what happens in America because Taiwan in America are tied to the global economy. America is a world player, right? They're a superpower. So what happens in America affects Taiwan in a number of ways. So yeah, and then on to the last part of his question. He says, um, what's Taipei 101 like? Have you ever been there? Uh, yes. Yes, I have been to Taipei 101. I've been there a few times. I will dig out the photos from my computer and show them to you. Okay. And also, he wants to know, I've seen footage of it on New Year's. Is it like the Times Square of Taiwan when it comes to New Year's? Yes, it is. Um, you can go down there, and it is like Times Square. They will hold like a big kind of party with music and a rally down there. And then when you get down to midnight... This will happen, and I took footage myself with my family at a park near Lingguang MRT station, which is not, it's not, the closest MRT station and the closest you're going to get is Taipei 101, but I didn't want to go down there. Instead, I went with my family to, like I said, Lingguang MRT station, and we took this footage. So when you, when it counts down, Taipei 101 explodes with fireworks, and uh, here's what it looks like. It's pretty spectacular. <laughs> Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that footage. It was a lot of fun going down there with my family, and um, it was pretty cool for my son to sit and enjoy the fireworks this time. Last time he was really, really young, and uh, he cried. 
but this year he's he's over a year old and uh he he quite enjoyed it so um yeah that was great fun okay uh thank you soul drift uh, next question came from a relatively new subscriber, a Taiwanese girl, that's pretty cool, named uh, Su Yu Chi. And she says, um, by the way, just out of curiosity, how do you find the squat toilet as an expat in Taiwan? Are there any that exist where you live? Uh, yeah, there are squat toilets that exist where I live, sure. <laughs> Um, I've used them before. They look like this. That is an Asian squat toilet. Uh, they are... I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I really, really hate the Asian squat toilet. It is awful. Um, because you have to squat. And... After 20-some, over 20 years, two decades of conditioning, I'm just used to a regular Western toilet, and I will, I'm never going to get used to the squat toilet. I hate it. I freaking hate it. Um, when I do use it, I take my pants off. I take my pants completely off, and I hang them on the hook in the bathroom stall because I'm scared to death that I'm going to, like, shit on my pants or that I'm going to piss on my pants. Because I'm just, I'm not going to line it up when I'm squatting over this weird thing. It's just, oh god, I, sorry, I hate it. I really hate the squat toilets. I know that they're popular in Asia because people see them as more sanitary, but, um, no, sorry. There's no, there's no, uh, there's nothing redeeming, like, I'm not gonna, no, sorry, I hate, I hate the squat toilets. There's no way where, there's no polite way. There's no way around it. I freaking hate squat toilets. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so you, you, uh, thank you for subscribing to me. You're pretty cool. I like your videos on learning um, Taiyu, on learning the uh, Taiwanese language, but I'm um, sorry. Um, I really don't like squat toilets. Okay. Um, and last one comes from a relatively new subscriber uh, also. Uh, somebody named Rebecca Lopez, who commented me on my video about teaching info, uh, ESL teaching in Taiwan. And I already answered her, but I'm going to go ahead and answer her again in case she watches this video and for other people who are watching this video, just to answer your question. So she says, about how much money would you say would be a good amount to start off with? And what she means by that is how much money should you bring to Taiwan to start off with if you're going to live here and teach ESL. And what I say to her, or what I said to her is this. Obviously, Rebecca, thank you for your question and your comment. Thank you for subscribing. That is so cool. That, uh, that makes me feel great. Um, when I came to Taiwan, uh, I did it with at least 60,000 NT dollars. Uh, and that comes out to about 2,000 U.S. dollars. Now, you can do that with less, and I had friends who did that, uh, but for me, that's what I did, okay? I, I came here with that amount, and it, I was glad I did that, too, because when I first came to this country, I faced a lot of hardship starting out, and I, I literally ran down to almost nothing before I got my first month's pay. So it, it was it was imperative, it was very important that I had the money that I did have to be able to survive before I got my first month's pay and I got established here. So yeah. Alright guys, that that is it. That wraps it up. This was an incredibly long video. I'm probably gonna split it into into two parts. Um and here we go, yeah. Uh one more time, I'll say it one more time. Happy 2016. Uh, thank you so much for being here with me, guys. I'm so glad that my subscriber base has grown. And I hope you'll stay with me for future videos. Uh, right after the upcoming presidential election here in Taiwan, I am going to make a video about the results. So you should see that from me in about a week. 
Alright, I'll see you then, guys. Bye-bye.